Now, I recently got my unboxing and first look at the brand new Surface Pro 8 from Microsoft. I really liked it. For those that didn't see it, check out that link below. I encourage you to check it out. It's a really great two-in-one, big improvements across the board. But I wanted to check out something that HP just sent over that really piqued my interest. It's the HP X2 Chromebook 11 here for 2021. Now, I don't normally do too many Chromebooks on the channel. I've done my share in the past, of course, but I haven't done one in a while. But when I saw the premium 2K display on this, the Surface Pro-like form factor with the kickstand and the keyboard and the pen all included in the box, I really wanted to check it out. So we're gonna take a look at it today to get our first look at it and see what this can bring to the table. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the HP Chromebook X211 here for 2021. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure that I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from HP. And once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing starts at $569.99 over at HP.com. The unit I have here today can be picked up for five Five hundred and ninety nine dollars over at Best Buy. For those interested, check out the link below for more information and where you can buy one. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We'll get to that in just a moment. And you get a 45 watt USB-C power adapter. It's pretty compact and you also get the extension cord as well. You get some documentation, which includes a setup guide and some warranty information as well. And you also get a SIM ejector tool. And unlike the Surface Pro 8 we recently took a look at, they give you the type cover along with the kickstand at no additional cost. Now that type cover was a separate purchase with the Surface Pro 8. It's a good value add here, throwing it in the box. I'm liking the look and feel of this type cover and especially that teal color, it looks pretty nice. And unlike the Surface Pro 8 where the kickstand is built into the device itself, this has a separate kickstand that connects magnetically to the back of the unit. And it has a pretty nice hinge on it so far. It looks pretty good in terms of the amount of angles you'll be able to get with it. And finally, the SKU that I have does come with a pen in the box. Again, another value add here. It's a USI pen. Will be great for taking notes and sketching out artwork. And they also give you some extra pen tips as well. And finally, we get to the unit itself, and I gotta say, holding it for the first time, this is a very premium all-metal design, not something we normally see with a Chromebook. And at 1.23 pounds or 0.55 kilograms, this is definitely portable to take with you on the go. This is very similar in terms of the weight and look, as we saw with the Surface Pro 8 from Microsoft. And as you can see here, the kickstand secures magnetically to the back. It's pretty secure, and as you can see, the kickstand working pretty well. And the magnetic connection to the keyboard cover is pretty tight and secure. It's not going anywhere once it's attached. Okay, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side. You get two USB-C ports. Now, these are full service ports. That means you'll do data charge and display out. Above that is a volume rocker up and down. And above that is your SIM tray that holds the micro SD card slot and the SIM card for the optional LTE. And on the right side is the place where you'll store and charge the pen. It sticks magnetically to the side. And so far, the keyboard's actually working pretty well. Good tactile feedback, good key travel. One thing to note, though, there is no backlight on it. Kind of a little bit of a miss, in my opinion, but not a deal breaker, just something to be aware of. And it does have that raised typing angle, as you would get with the Surface Pro 8. That's great for typing for extended periods of time. One thing to note, it's not quite as sturdy in that raised typing angle as that Surface Pro 8. Something to be aware of. And it has a really nice touchpad. It's a good size, actually, and I found it very responsive. Two-finger scrolling working well, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. So far, so good. All right, let's talk about the display. What we have here is an 11-inch display with a resolution of 2160 by 1440. And yes, that is a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. 
It's 236 pixels per inch for those wondering, and it's a 10-point capacitive multi-touch display with native pen support. This is an IPS display, and yes, it is a glossy display. That means you will notice some glaring reflections in certain lighting conditions, something to be aware of. And it's a very bright display coming in at 430 nits, making this a really good choice for both indoor and outdoor use. It's a really nice bright display so far. I'm loving it. And the numbers look really good on this display. Really deep blacks, good white points, good contrast, and you do get a low Delta E score of 1.46, making it a color accurate display. And it covers 100% of the color gamut in terms of the sRGB. That's good. And being able to take notes and use the pen to navigate through the OS has actually been pretty good so far. That's the USI pen. Again, no additional cost as it is included with this SKU. Again, not all SKUs have the pen, so be aware. Now, as far as taking notes, sketching on artwork, working well so far, being able to draw on this tablet has been pretty good. The weight isn't overly heavy, so you can hold it in your hand. It doesn't get too uncomfortable, although it is better on a table or connected to the attached keyboard cover. That's actually been pretty good as well. And Chrome OS has really matured over the years, adding a lot of new features, and you're also able to run Android apps as well as run Linux. And this is running the Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C chip. It's been pretty snappy, pretty fluid. I haven't seen too much delay or any kind of lag. It's actually been pretty good so far, but I have a lot more testing to do to see if this will hold muster against other laptops and other Chromebooks. So this is a front-facing camera. It's capable of up to almost 2K resolution in terms of the video resolution. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? of the internal mics. The HP Chromebook X211 here for 2021 is pretty impressive, especially for the price and the high-end display that you do get. Uh, let me know what you think about this front-facing camera in that comment section below. And here are examples of photos and videos on the rear camera. And this is the rear facing camera in terms of video quality. Let me know. It was a pretty nasty day yesterday here in Las Vegas, overcast, but today it's sunny. And let's see out here how it looks. Now it's a little bit windy today. Let me know how the internal mics are doing, competing with the wind. There's my car, of course, my Model S, which I absolutely love. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the video and audio quality? I am curious to know and the speakers are located on the front portion of the display and i have to say it's not the strong suit of this tablet it gets pretty loud but it doesn't have any bass at all it's pretty tinny actually now you might want to use a good pair of bluetooth headphones that's what you'll only be able to do with this since it doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack that's a bit of a miss all right let's bring it all home so far so good about 48 hours with this device and i gotta say i'm impressed i think chrome os has come a long way although not perfect this is a really nice two-in-one device with a detachable display obviously it's not going to perform as well as a surface pro 8 which has a core i7 11 gen tiger lake processor but this snapdragon 7c chip is actually performing better than i expected so far no lag in terms of the web browsing no lag in terms of the games I will show you more of this in the upcoming full review. I found that the device just seemed to get the work done and it's a nice companion device. And I think at $569 starting price, that's very competitive, especially with a really beautiful 2K display, not something we normally see in this price point. And with my initial use, I've been seeing about nine and a half hours in terms of battery life. And that's actually been pretty good. So, so far so good in that department. I'll have more to say on this very soon in my upcoming full review. But suffice it to say, the Chromebook X211 here for 2021 brings a lot to the table and at a good price. So what do you think about this bad boy? The HP Chromebook X2, uh, 11 inch, two in one detachable, of course, here for 2021. The USI pen working well, sticks magnetically, stores and charges on the side of the device as you see there. Uh, the negatives here, of course, let me start off with that. There's no 3.5 millimeter audio jack. You're going to have these Bluetooth headphones or maybe even a, a USB-C adapter. I don't know if that works, but you won't get wired headphones with this. No 3.5 millimeter audio jack. I think that's a miss. You do get the two USB-C ports, full service, data charge, display out, worked okay. 
The display is the star here, 2K display here, multi-touch, capacitive screen, of course. It's a glossy display, not too reflective, working well, gets bright, about 430 nits or so. Actually covered the color gamut really well, and it was color accurate. So very impressive outing with this display from HP. It's looking good. Uh, the keyboard cover detaches as we talked about. Now this keyboard cover is very similar in style that we saw with the Surface Pro 8's keyboard, but the difference is here, there's no Alcantara here. This is a nice soft finish on it, has a pretty decent grip. Sticks magnetically as we said, very, very strong connection. It's not coming off when it's on. And the difference between this and the Surface Pro 8 of course is that this comes off. This is the kickstand, sticks magnetically to the back stays securely on there. You don't have to worry about it falling off. And it gives you some really nice angles, of course, with this kickstand. So it's working well, as you'd expect with a detachable Surface Pro-like. Now, as far as the Snapdragon 7C that we've been using on this so far, working well, very snappy, very fluid. I haven't seen any slowdowns or any kind of delay or any kind of lag on it. It's actually been pretty good, but I still have to do my further testing, but the numbers are looking pretty decent. It's not gonna blow you out of the water. It's not gonna compete with the Surface Pro device, which has a Core i7, up to a Core i7, Tiger Lake processor. This is a, a more mobile processor, of course, that's going to be more akin to a smartphone performance with that Snapdragon 7C. We've seen a similar stuff before, uh, ARM-based chip, and it's actually working pretty decently. I'll have more numbers for you very soon. $569 is a really good look for this. I like the price. I like what they bring to the table, the pen, the accessories, the keyboard, the kickstands, all included. You don't have to pay extra like you do with the Surface Pro 8. Nice secondary device, nice for a student who wants something to be portable to take with you on the go. This might be your ticket. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.